Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In a previous video, I talked about the so-called weather bomb or the bomb, bombogenesis or bomb um, cyclone, cyclone bomb, you know, whatever variation you want to use. Parts of, uh, this one part of North America, okay, Mount Washington, it's uh, just over a mile high. There are 100 mile an hour winds. The wind chill reached minus 94 Fahrenheit, you know, which is quite amazing considering the temperature on Mars is normally about minus 78 Fahrenheit. So I'm, I'm going to relate. Uh, I talked about some of the different impacts of this storm in the last video, and right now I'm going to relate it using two pieces of two websites basically. First one is Climate Reanalyzer, second one is Earth Null School. I'm going to talk about the pressures, the winds, the temperatures, the temperature anomalies in the atmosphere and ocean, and how, how climate change basically means that we can expect more and more of these extreme weather events like these storms um, as we move forward. So I'm just going to get the light to increase the contrast. Okay, so here we have climate, if you just Google climate reanalyzer, this is what you come up with here. Okay, so what we're looking at is a two meter temperature and you can see, you know, minus 30s coming all the way down here. Okay, if you just click on this, it takes you around to different views of the planet. Okay, and if you just keep going, um, you can see uh, you get back to where you started. We've got the average temperature, the daily maximum temperature, the daily minimum temperature. This is for Saturday, January 6, 2018. Okay, we can look at uh, two meter temperature anomalies. So if you take the temperature on Saturday, Janu on, on January 6, in, from 1979 to 2000, okay, and you get the average at each point on the Earth, and then you take what's happening on, the, on t today's particular day, do the subtraction, that gives you a temperature difference or an anomaly. So we got warmer than normal temperatures here on the um, West Coast, and we, of course we have this really cold area here. The jet streams have weakened and they become very wavy as I'll show you. So this is a trough of the jet stream. So this cold air is spilling out of the Arctic. It's like opening a refrigerator door and all that cold air is coming out of the Arctic over North America. Meanwhile, the Arctic temperatures are much warmer than normal, which is really impacting the sea ice. The sea ice uh, has only grown to about 12 million square kilometers, which is, which is near at, at record low for this time of year or near record low. You can look at clouds here. You can look at precipitable water. You can see all that water that was coming up here. Um, very warm ocean temperatures, lots of evaporation. So as you get the cold air coming down and then coming up, it's sitting on top of the of the uh, warmer surface ocean, therefore warmer air at the surface, therefore also laden with moisture, and then it rises up into the cold air, precipitates, you know, it's moisture laden, and that moisture was dumped all the way up the coast, um, and the low pressure area caused the storm surge as it moved up. You know, we can look at other different, other parameters, you know, snow depth, um, cut, you know, where, it's, how, the extent of snow depth, basically, this is in centimeters, um, wind speeds. Uh, this is the jet streams. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a, there's a drop here, very intense um, streaks here, you know, but you can see the general trough here and the general ridge over here, warmer under the ridge, very cold above the trough, cold and stormy, warm and clear air. This, these are the pressures halfway up the atmosphere. Okay, so what this is showing is basically you could track the jet stream is taking this configuration. Okay, so there's this huge trough over North America. And let's go over here and click and look at other parts. Okay, so you can see uh, how it varies. If we go down here, it's actually, you can see, okay, look at this ridge up here. 
Swarm over here. The warm air is coming up. The jet stream acts as a wall between the cold air above and the warmer air at lower latitudes. We're talking just the northern hemisphere. So you get this strong ridge here, cold, warmer air underneath the ridge, because it's derived from up here, and you get this, this uh, trough here. The cold Arctic air has spilled right down and is just sitting there. And this pattern is very persistent, hasn't changed. So we've had a couple weeks where it's been extremely cold in North America. Look at this strong ridge here coming down. Whenever you get this sort of thing, you also get large winds um, where there's rapid changes in the jet stream curvature. Um, there we see over Europe, you know, it's very warm up here. So it's much, much warmer up in these regions than it is in these regions here. Um, very, very wavy jet stream. Also, even, even in the Southern Hemisphere, we have a significant waviness, you know, and this is, their, this is their summer there. Okay, so the sun's in the Southern Hemisphere. The jet stream should be going closer and closer and, be, and generally becoming more zonal. But, you know, we're not seeing that basically the jet streams are, you know, the, the whole system is connected. The changes that we're seeing, the, the huge changes that we're seeing in the Arctic, we're now starting to see much larger changes in the Antarctic and a global um, rejigging of the jet streams. Okay, uh, this is sea ice and snow cover. Okay, Antarctica. Okay, so there's not much sea ice around there. It's all going. It's the summer down there. And we can see the sea ice coverage here. But look, these vast areas here of open water, you know, a few years ago, these, these would have all been covered with sea ice. So the extent is much, much lower. Um, instead of being about 15 million square kilometers, it's about 12 million square kilometers right now. Sea surface temperatures, Okay, this is in uh, degrees Celsius, but we'll look at the anomaly. And what you can see is where the Gulf Stream is coming up, you know, these areas are much, much warmer, up to four degrees warmer temperatures on the surface of the ocean than normal. So basically when the cool there came down because the jet stream is broken, swept over the Gulf, did this shift over here, we have very cold air over the very warm ocean water. Those huge temperature differences caused very strong convection, a lot of energy in the atmosphere, and uh, you know this 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 uh, enormous uh, cyclone strengthening very very fast, faster than than hurricanes, basically, and uh, moving up. So let's have a look. Okay, so there's lots of information that you can get from Climate Reanalyzer, but let's have a look at Earth Null School. So just Google Earth Null School. Um, you click on Earth, and it brings up the um, menu. Now let's have a look at North America here. Okay, so we'll get North America up here. Okay, um, so this is what we have right now. Um, let's go back a day, one day. Downloading. Let me close Climate Reanalyzer. Okay, let's have a uh, cooperate, please. There we go. Okay, so you can cycle back a full day with this. You can cycle back three hours with this or advance. And you can go a week out into the future and get a forecast or a modeled prediction. Okay, so that we're going back. Let's go back to January 1st. Okay, so here's January 1st. You don't see, so January 2nd. Okay, here we go. So we've got this cyclone forming. Now I'm going to advance up three hours and we'll focus on this particular area. Okay, and you can see how this thing developed here and strengthened. Okay, so it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a compact eye like a hurricane. It has a much larger area, but the pressure is lowering and lowering and lowering extremely rapidly. I'm advancing by three hour amounts. Okay, so it's an elongated eye, if you like. Now it's more circular and the winds are stronger in this region, as indicated by the red color. And if we keep going up, it's heading right up into the, into the Maritimes. Okay, and uh, 
you know, it's dumping all kinds of snow. It's pulling all of this cold air down from the Arctic. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, so let's go back to the first again. And now let's look at the uh, jet streams. Okay, and I got to back off a bit. Okay, so you can see this jet stream here, dip here. You know, as we uh, go forward, this is January 2nd, January 3rd. Now look at the strong dip here in the jet stream. Okay, this is causing the huge coldness over North America. Look at this, because it's feeding the storm here, intensifying the storm, and then it starts moving upwards. Okay, and the storm's already moved up. So let's have a look at the mean sea level pressure now, and we'll go back uh, we'll go back again to January 1st, start off. Okay, so this is what we see. Um, let me close this here. Okay, so this is, uh, th 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 what you can see here, th these are areas, 900, th these are areas, this is low pressure areas, these are high pressure areas. So the low, look at the red, 964 hexapascal, okay. Okay, so it's quite low, but this is on the first. So now let's cycle through. Let's bring North America up here. You can also notice the uh, areas down here. I mean, look at some of the pressures here in these areas, 967. I mean, most of these things are out to sea, so we don't notice them, right? Let's have a look at uh, what happened just up the east coast of North America and compare it to some of these other things that are happening out to sea that nobody notices right which will you know in the future these things will come to land more more and more often okay so we'll go back we'll we'll start advancing through time here okay so here is the look at this low low pressure area up here okay this is the third this is okay so here we go Okay, so this was this caused all the grief. Compare the size of this, compare the intensity of this to what we have elsewhere on the planet. Okay, look at the pressure already over here coming up in towards the Arctic. Okay, so I'm gonna back up until this thing disappeared. So where did it come from? Okay, so it's not there. January 3rd, 10 local time. There it is here, it's developing. Okay. So it's still over a thousand uh, hexapascal or millibar, same, unit, same thing, they're equivalent. There it is moving upwards. Okay, this is a low pressure area moving upward. So don't forget the low pressure over the ocean, the basically causes a storm surge. The ocean rises underneath because the pressure is <coughs> lower on that region that caused the storm surge up the coast so let's have a watch watch as this thing intensifies i'm just advancing three hours it's getting much larger and stronger you can see this area is 969 okay it's intensifying i'm not finding the maximum but or the, or the, the uh, you know i could expand this and play around and try to find the minimum you can do that yourself um here we go as it advances upwards Okay, so here we go here, uh, 959. Okay, and it's starting to come ashore. So maybe here is probably something maximum so we can, you know, have a look, expand it out and, you know, move the pointer around, 959, 959 all around. Okay, so that's not the peak, but it's getting pretty close. So it dropped to 951, I think, when it went ashore, I think in St. John's, uh, um, it was uh, that level. So what you can see is as it goes up, you can see what's going on. But remember, if we zoom out, you know, and look at the whole planet, look at all of these areas. Look at this low pressure area here. Look how big it is. Can you imagine this going ashore, you know, along a populated area? Or if this thing here was as large, it would completely devastate things. So, you know, it, this is part of the, the element of disruption, climate disruption. You know, even in the southern hemisphere here, as these things move, you know, if one of these things gets closer to South America or Australia, we see that sort of thing going on there. So we basically nix the jet streams. 